welcome to the deep dive. Today we're tackling, well, one of the really big challenges in medicine. That's right. Developing vaccines that last, you know, single shot vaccines for these really complex diseases like HIV or even for threats like COVID that just keep changing on us. Uh huh. It's been a huge goal for decades. Yeah, it's felt almost like a holy grail, something That's just right. out of reach. Mm -hmm. But there's this new study reported by The Independent and it gives a really, I think, exciting glimpse into how we might actually get there. It does. Okay, let's unpack the science. What's truly um, revolutionary here is thinking about diseases like HIV, they're notorious for evading our immune system right. or viruses that mutate constantly. Mm -hmm. For those getting a single dose vaccine that gives strong lasting protection, that's been the dream. Absolutely. Think about the logistics, you know, multi-dose schedules in remote places or just getting people back for boosters. Yeah, it's a night. A single shot would just transform global health, access, yeah. how effective campaigns are overnight. Totally. And what's fascinating here, like you said, this study isn't just tweaking the usual stuff. It's looking at something we've kind of overlooked and making it central. That's a perfect way to put it. So the real innovation, as I understand it, is how these scientists are combining these uh, immunity stimulants. Yeah, adjuvants. Adjuvants, right. Even for those of us who follow vaccine news, the role of adjuvants can be a bit subtle sometimes. It can. Could you give us a quick refresher? What are adjuvants and why is combining them such a big deal here, especially for HIV? Well, of course. So basically any vaccine has two key parts. First, the antigen. Okay. That's the bit of the virus or bacteria your immune system needs to recognize. Think of it like a mugshot of the enemy. Got it. Then you have the adjuvant. Adjuvants are like the immune system's alarm bells or maybe it's hype squad. Huh, I like the hype squad. Yeah. They're added to boost and focus your body's immune response to that antigen make it stronger, make it last longer. So without them, the immune system might just ignore the mugshot. Exactly, or just glance at it and forget. With a good adjuvant, it pays attention, it learns, it builds that crucial memory. Right. And historically, vaccine research, it's mostly focused on improving the immunogens themselves. Yeah. Those specific antigens, the mugshots. Makes sense, you want the best picture of the bad guy. Right. The thinking was, if we just make the antigen perfect, the immune system will figure it out. Adjuvants. They were seen as, well, less studied, supporting players, not the main strategists. Oh, okay. And that's precisely why this work from scientists at MIT and Scripps Research is so important. Mm -hmm. They found that by combining two specific adjuvants, this novel engineered one called Alum Peace or SMNP, they could seriously ramp up the immune response to HIV in mice. Much better than just one. Oh, way beyond what either one could do alone. It's a real strategic shift. It's not just about improving the target. It's about optimizing how the body learns to fight it. So it's not just what the immune system sees, but how it's presented and, well, amplified. That makes a lot of sense for building a stronger defense. Okay. But it does make me wonder, are there any potential downsides, any challenges if you make the immune response this sustained, or is it all upside? That's a really important question. Scientists are always thinking about that balance. Right. You want a controlled and effective sustained response. Right. You definitely don't want an overactive one causing unwanted inflammation. Okay. What's promising here is how the sustainability seems to come from how the vaccine is presented within the immune system's training grounds. Ah. Uh. It's not just hitting the system with a massive initial dose that might be overwhelming. It's more about this intelligent, long-term engagement. That's quite different. That's reassuring. Okay, so you mentioned the immune system's training grounds. The study says these combined adjuvants ended up in the lymph nodes. Yes. And work specifically with something called follicular dendritic cells. That sounds incredibly precise. It is. Can you walk us through that? How does that interaction lead to this stronger, potentially single-dose response? Absolutely. So, yeah, think of your lymph nodes like the elite training academies for your immune cells. Okay, the academies. It's where immune cells meet, interact, get educated about threats. When you get a vaccine, the info needs processing in these specialized places. Right. What this dual adjuvant did was act like a super effective guide. All right. It helped the vaccine gather specifically on these follicular dendritic cells, FDCs, inside those lymph nodes. FDCs, what do they do exactly? Okay, so FDCs are like the... Um, specialist librarians or maybe curators in this immune academy. Librarians. Their job is to grab onto and hold these antigens, the mugshots, for a long time. Okay. Then they carefully present these antigens to B cells. 
B cells are the white blood cells that actually make antibodies. Oh, the antibody factory. Exactly. And this presentation, it doesn't just trigger a first reaction. It kicks off a really powerful secondary immune response. Secondary response. Meaning, meaning the immune system doesn't just react once. It learns to respond much faster, much stronger, and with better targeted high affinity antibodies if it sees the real thing later. This memory is absolutely key for lasting single dose protection. So it's all about building that really robust, agile memory. That's a fantastic way to think about it. And here's the real kicker for the single dose potential. The vaccine antigen stayed in those lymph nodes for up to a month. A month, wow. Yeah. That long presence gave the immune system a much bigger window to, quote, increase the production and variety of antibodies against HIV. So like giving it more study time. Precisely. It's like giving the immune system a month-long masterclass instead of a quick cram session. Okay. Professor J. Christopher Love, one of the senior authors, put it really well. He said, when you think about the immune system sampling all of the possible solutions, the more chances we give it to identify an effective solution, the better. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. More chances to find the best weapon. Exactly. That extended study time is what seems to generate such a strong and lasting response. Hmm. What's really revolutionary here isn't just that the immune system learns, but how we might now guide that learning over time. Turning a quick signal into a long-term lesson. Yes. It's like re-engineering the immune learning curve. It's more than just a tweak. That quote really nails it. A month-long masterclass. It almost sounds like how our brains learn, doesn't it? Like space repetition helps us remember things better. Is there a parallel there? That's a great connection. Mm -hmm. You're right. Our brains do solidify long-term memory with repeated exposure over time. Space repetition works. Mm -hmm. It's kind of similar for the immune system. One big blast might trigger something, yeah. but without sustained engagement in these learning centers like the lymph nodes, the it can fade. Right. What these combined adjuvants seem to do is create this internal, self-sustaining review session. The antigen keeps getting presented to the B cells. Like built-in flashcards. Exactly. Like reviewing notes over weeks to really embed the knowledge. This guided review seems to lead to a much deeper, more comprehensive understanding for the immune system, getting it ready for the real fight. Wow, that is incredibly clever. So this research kicked off focusing on HIV and COVID-19. Yes. Both notoriously tricky targets for vaccines, especially single dose ones, HIV's diversity and how it hides. It's been a massive challenge. Monumental. And COVID, well, it mutates so fast, keeps us all on our toes. Constantly. But the way you're describing this tailored adjuvant approach, it sounds like the implications could be much wider. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This really could broaden the horizon for vaccine development quite dramatic. How so? Well, the researchers themselves said this offers the opportunity to engineer new formulations across a wide range of different diseases. Okay, so beyond HIV and COVID. Definitely. It's not just about those two. You could potentially apply this to things like influenza to visit it. Imagine not needing an annual shot for the flu. That would be amazing. Or preparing for other pandemic outbreaks, future threats, emerging viruses we haven't even seen yet. Right. The core idea is tailoring adjuvants to work in combination. It's not one size fits all. It's more like a strategic framework. A platform, maybe? Kind of, yeah. A framework that could lead to more effective and possibly single dose vaccines for lots of conditions. Think about malaria or TB diseases needing really strong lasting immunity. Which have also been incredibly hard to vaccinate against. Exactly. It's about using our understanding of the immune system to optimize how we present the threat, not just endlessly refining the threat picture itself. That makes sense. And it builds on previous work, too. Mm -hmm. Professor Daryl Irvine, another senior author, had developed a compound used in this study earlier. Science often works like that, building block by block. It's great to see that collaboration pay off. It really feels like an exciting shift. Optimizing our own body's defense is so smartly. It is transformative. Well, OK, the reality check. This was a mouse study. How big is the leap from mice to humans? What are the usual hurdles? It's definitely a big leap. You're right to ask. The path from a promising mouse study to a vaccine people can actually get, it's long, usually many years. Okay. First, you need a lot more preclinical work, more safety, more efficacy confirmation in different animal models. Right. Then you get into human clinical trials. Phase I is all about safety, small group of volunteers. Mm -hmm. If that looks good, phase two involves more people checking efficacy, finding the right dose. Okay. And then phase three, 
that's thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people, confirming safety and efficacy in a really diverse population, looking for any rare side effects. Wow, that's a huge undertaking. It is. Each stage is demanding, expensive, and absolutely critical before any regulator would approve it. So yes, it's a fantastic scientific breakthrough, but patience and frankly continued funding are crucial. That brings us to something relevant the original report mentioned. It came out when new COVID variants were emerging, like the Stratus strain, XFG, and XFG.3. While this research is super promising for the future, what's the immediate take on these kinds of evolving threats we're dealing with now? Well, if we connect this to the bigger picture, hmm. it's a reminder that viruses evolve. That's just what they do. Yeah, it's their job description. Exactly. The article noted XFG.3 was causing, what, 30% of UK cases at the time? That sounds like a lot. It does. But experts were quick to say there is no cause for alarm. It's normal for viruses to mutate and change. It's this constant dance between the virus and us. Okay. And that constant evolution is precisely why this new adjuvant research is so vital. We can't just keep chasing every new variant with a slightly tweaked vaccine every few months. It feels unsustainable. It does. We need more fundamental advances, things that give broader, more durable protection. So while this specific study was in mice, its findings could inform future vaccine design for humans. Help us get ahead of the curve. That's the hope. Yes. Get ahead of the curve, or at least build defenses that are less easily sidestepped by the next mutation. Mm. It's a hugely important step. But like we said, that path from mice to people is still a journey. Yeah. It just underscores why we need this kind of ongoing research, especially with pathogens constantly trying to outsmart us. So wrapping this up, what does this all mean for you, our listener, as we try to understand health and science news? Yeah. Well, this deep dive really shows the incredible potential in focusing on a part of vaccines, the adjuvants, that maybe haven't always gotten the spotlight. Right. By cleverly combining and tailoring them, scientists aren't just making small adjustments. They're fundamentally rethinking how we prepare our immune systems. Mm -hmm. They're paving the way for vaccines that could be much more effective and maybe, just maybe, require only a single dose. That's the goal. It feels like a genuinely exciting, maybe even transformative shift in strategy moving beyond just targeting the bug to really optimizing our body's own response for lasting protection. And this raises a really important question, I think. Go on. Imagine a world where stopping widespread disease, even from viruses like HIV that evolve, or influenza, or new pandemic threats, could be as simple as one shot. Wow. How might a future of single-dose, broadly effective vaccines truly change how we handle global health crises? disease prevention, especially for populations that are hard to reach. Yeah, in developing nations, or even just during a fast-moving pandemic where simplicity is everything. Exactly. It's a vision that goes beyond just treatment, aiming for real global immunity, a profound shift in how we approach public health. It really gives you a lot to think about, doesn't it? 